In a gigantic luxury building, the largest ever built in the world, an overwhelming revolt breaks out among the residents, throwing everything into complete disarray and exposing the dark face of humanity. Inside an immense building, neglected and filthy, Robert Lang walks among the bodies and shares with us the surprising sensation of being at home, fully relaxed and calm, even during such chaos. And on that same floor, we are introduced to two other characters, Nathan Steele and Cosgrove. Due to the lack of food in the building, not even the beautiful dog can escape becoming the next meal. The movie takes us back in time, unraveling the events that led to so much suffering in that building. Three months ago, Robert Lang arrived at his new home in this impressive, state-of-the-art building. With 40 floors, including a market, gym, and quality elevators, it is a place where many people live. During his first few days in his new home, Robert was enjoying the sun, completely naked, when he met Charlotte, his new upstairs neighbor, and Richard Wilder. They exchanged introductions and Charlotte, taking a liking to Robert, invited him to an upcoming party. However, Robert then decides to visit the spa to relieve the weight he is carrying, especially after the recent loss of his sister. When the session is over, he hurriedly gets ready and leaves for work, which seems to be the central element in his life. Soon, he arrives at the Physiology University and gives an extremely brutal and disgusting practical lesson to his snobbish students, and because of the terrible sight of a head being cut open in front of him, his student Munro faints. Later, Charlotte's long-awaited party finally gets underway, and Robert doesn't miss the celebration. Amid the excitement, he makes a special connection with pregnant Helen and the two enjoy a pleasant chat. Meanwhile, Richard flirts shamelessly with other women, ignoring his pregnant wife. Robert also makes the acquaintance of Nathan Steele, an orthodontist who, ironically, doesn't seem to like the children in the building, even though his job is to look after their teeth. However, while Nathan dedicates himself to the oral health of others, a famous TV presenter called Cosgrove seems to be interested in looking after Nathan's wife. After finishing his conversations with these characters, Robert enjoys the party a little longer before leaving. However, when he gets home, he is overwhelmed by the pain of losing his sister and decides to take some sleeping pills. The next morning, he wakes up with a hangover and decides to miss work. Just then, Charlotte knocks on his door, and the two of them go down to the pool, apparently because Robert agreed to do something with her while he was drunk the night before. Downstairs, Robert spots Helen in the pool with her children, but before he can approach her, he is approached by Simmons, an employee of the influential Mr. Royal. He wants to meet Robert and then takes him to a private elevator that takes them to the terrace, where a surprising landscape unfolds, a large green field, a goat, and an elegant hut. Upon entering the hut, Robert meets Anthony Royal, the visionary behind the building's design. Surprisingly, Royal seems like an ordinary person. Royal's wife, on the other hand, is mentally unstable and treats the employees with haughtiness. The two men talk as they walk, and Royal proposes that Robert take on the role of physiotherapist, even though he's not a physiotherapist, as his leg suffers from an old injury from an accident. In addition, they arrange a squash match for two days and Robert is invited to a meeting organized by Royal's wife, where he will have the opportunity to understand the workings of the building in greater depth. After planning everything meticulously, Robert heads for the elevator. Before leaving, he tries to help Miss Royal organize something but ends up complicating the situation even more, and his attitude catches her eye. Robert then prepares for a date with Charlotte. They have dinner together and share a special evening, but are interrupted at the height of their intimacy by her son, Toby. Toby's nanny shows up and takes him away, but the mood breaks, and the adults say goodbye. The next day, Robert goes shopping in the building's supermarket and meets a famous actress, although he doesn't recognize her. Afterward, he returns home, puts on his best suit, and heads to the meeting organized by Miss Royal. At the event, everyone is dressed as if they were nobles from a colonial era, and the conversation revolves around the supposed superiority of the inhabitants of the higher floors of the building over those who live on the lower floors. When Robert tries to join in the conversation, he is ignored by everyone, including his student Monroe. He lights a cigarette and talks to one of the servants about the building's gym. 
Suddenly, Simmons appears and drags him into an elevator which, due to a power problem, stops midway. The next day, Robert meets Royal for a game of squash and they discuss the power failure that affected almost every floor of the building. In addition, Royal apologizes for the elitist and insensitive behavior of his wife and the guests at the party. During the conversation, Royal lets slip that he had an involvement with Charlotte, which makes Robert angry, but he chooses not to take any action. Royal also reveals that his original idea for the building was not social stratification, but a place of transformation for everyone. The narrative then takes us to the complaints of the residents of the lower floors, who feel cheated because the promise of a safe and pleasant environment is not being fulfilled, with one young woman having suffered a terrible assault during the electricity blackout. No one seemed to care about the crime, and Wilder became increasingly nervous about the disrespectful treatment he was receiving. After this harrowing experience, Wilder asks Robert for a lift, but Robert replies that he can't remember where he left his car, which sounds strange. When Robert arrives at work, he receives the results of Monroe's tests after his fainting spell. Although the tests indicate that Monroe is fine, Robert thinks he's arrogant and snobbish, and decides to lie, claiming that they found something in the young man's brain. This lie leaves Monroe devastated. Later, some of the building's residents gather for a children's party and begin to discuss the injustices faced by the lower classes, who pay the same rate as the residents of the upper floors. Concerned about the humiliation his children may suffer, Wilder gathers other residents to form a team determined to fight this injustice. In their first act, they take the children back to the swimming pool from which they were expelled. Meanwhile, Toby, Charlotte's son, stays behind and has a conversation with Lang about family. During the conversation, the boy mentions that his father lives on the higher floors of the building, creating a mystery in the air. Robert then recalls Royal's words, which suggested that he had been involved with Charlotte. Before taking the boy back home, Robert gives Helen a sleeping pill, as she has been having trouble sleeping lately. At the same time, Wilder leads the group to the swimming pool, where they confront the residents of the upper floors and cause a ruckus until they manage to evict the snobs. The problem is that, after this incident, Wilder drowns a dog in the pool. Meanwhile, Robert and Toby take the stairs, since the power outage prevents them from using the elevator, and halfway up they almost get into a fight. After leaving the boy with Charlotte, Robert returns, saying he is going to the pool. There, he finds a woman in tears, having lost her dog, who is like a son to her. Wilder returns home and sees his wife asleep. He takes the opportunity to go out again and gets into a fight during a party in the corridor with a resident of the higher floors. He brutally assaults the man, and only Robert has enough courage to try to stop the violence but ends up being shot by mistake. The party continues as if nothing had happened until Munro climbs onto a balcony and says goodbye to life. Everyone, including Toby, witnesses this tragic moment. The next day, the power failure affected the supermarket's fruit and probably other perishable foods. Robert is deeply shaken by what happened the night before since he believed he had a brain tumor. While Charlotte and Robert talk, Wilder appears upset, expressing his intention to make a documentary about the building, as he finds it strange that the incident with Monroe hasn't attracted the attention of the police. However, Robert doesn't reply, and Wilder leaves. At the same time, on the higher floors, the wealthier residents meet to discuss the need to show who is in control of the building. To do this, they plan to control all the building's resources. Later, Wilder returns home and begins preparing to start his documentary about the building, while his wife expresses her discontent at living on the lower floors. In the midst of all this, Robert notices something strange and rushes to his room. There, he is blocked by Steele, who claims that they are in the same situation. Suddenly, however, the orthodontist runs out and attacks a dog for no apparent reason. At the top of the building, Royal assaults his wife for packing her things to leave, when the elevator door opens, revealing the bloody dog that has been assaulted. The days go by and the situation in the building seems to deteriorate more and more. Robert, despite his usual organization, begins to act on autopilot and feels anguished by guilt, arriving late for work and even sleeping in his office. 
the building begins to accumulate garbage in the stairwells, violence increases, and the residents lose control. Gangs form, supermarkets run out of stock, and Wilder and others begin to document the building's situation. Robert is even forced to confront a man who tried to steal his paint, while Wilder is brutally assaulted by some men. Meanwhile, Helen takes her children to a hidden location, where they meet other people, and several children from the lower floors have gathered. She leaves her children there and goes to Robert's house, who welcomes her enthusiastically, showing her his painting, and they end up getting close. At the top of the building, Royal wanders around his apartment full of naked people and realizes that his wife has disappeared. When he leaves, an obscene party breaks out. He goes down to the lower floors and finds Wilder. He claims that he is living there to avoid aggression, but Wilder is not convinced and warns him to be careful as long as he stays there. Just then, a policeman appears at the door to check the situation, but Royal makes up a story and bribes the policeman to leave the building. Afterward, the owner of the building goes upstairs and sees that everything is a mess, full of dirt and people attacking each other. When he saw that one of these people was his wife, he became angry and started beating everyone up until he managed to rescue her. Meanwhile, Wilder talks to one of Royal's maids who tells him how to get to the powerful man's house, hands him a pistol, and reveals that Toby is the son of the building's architect. Robert and Helen are lying in bed when the woman lets slip that she came to his apartment because Charlotte had told her that he was the best object of pleasure in the building. This makes Robert uncomfortable and he asks the woman to leave. On her way out, Helen ends up being captured, as women are now being kidnapped and traded for food. Wilder, on the other hand, is in the royal couple's apartment, but as he's upset, he captures the woman to assault her. The next day, while the residents of the lower floors seem to have returned from a battlefield, the inhabitants of the upper floors go about their business as normal, as if they were living in parallel realities. Robert Lang was in his apartment when a letter slipped under the door, interrupting his routine. Meanwhile, on the higher floors, the wealthy are debating the ethical and legal boundaries that Wilder crossed with his actions the night before. The solution they come up with is to send a letter to Robert, asking him to perform a lobotomy on Wilder. Later, Robert and Wilder meet and begin a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Wilder reveals that he has realized that he can't live without Helen and that he can't stand living there any longer. Robert, the doctor, begins to suspect that Richard is the only lucid person in the building because he is the only one who doesn't passively accept the situation of chaos and despair. Then a new scene unfolds, Robert is getting ready to leave for work, but Simmons intercepts him and forcibly takes him to the top of the building, where some people are waiting for him. The doctor refuses to perform the lobotomy on Wilder, claiming that he seems to be the least insane person in the place. At this critical moment, the men carry Robert to the edge of the terrace, about to commit an extreme act. Luckily, Anthony Royal arrives in time and stops this desperate action. The two go to the dining table and begin a deep conversation. Royal admits that his big mistake was bringing so many different people together under one roof. On the other hand, Robert expresses that he has somehow found his place in this peculiar and chaotic environment. While these revelations are taking place, Helen is in labor in one of the apartment's bedrooms, receiving support from other women and one of the building's residents. In the next scene, children are playing in the yard when Wilder appears looking for Helen and pointing a gun at Royal. The man hides behind the children and women and is humiliated by Wilder. Royal is obviously irritated by the man's words and starts a fight, but ends up being shot. But Wilder doesn't get away with it, as several women avenge Royal's death. In the present day, the building remains in total disarray, but even so, Robert feels at home with a new family, showing that he is settled and happy even in chaos. That was the summary of the movie High Rise, enjoy and see summaries of other movies here on the channel, you will surely like it.